Chapter 5 The Alamanni in the Middle Ages The Alamanni and their Suevic brethren, who followed them in the invasion and division of the Roman Empire, took possession of all the Roman provinces of Raetia and Vindalicia, and the territory of Agri Decumates. Thus the Alamanni filled up all that southwestern corner of Germany and Switzerland, which is naturally bounded by the Rhine as it flows westward to Bale, and then makes a sudden turn at right angles northward to Strasbourg, Worms, and Mainz. They occupied the northern border of what is now Switzerland, as far south as Winterthur. To this territory, to the eastward of the northern flow of the Rhine, they also added that part of Gaul which lay between the Rhine and Moselle, and the headwaters of the Seine. Thus in all, at the fall of the empire in 476, the Alamanni occupied the country which now comprises Alsace, Lorraine, Baden, Württemberg, greater part of Bavaria, and the southern of the large divisions of Hesse-Darmstadt. When the Alamanni were defeated by Clovis, their Gallic possessions became the prize of the conqueror, but all the rest they were allowed to occupy and were permitted by Clovis and his successors to enjoy their peculiar manners and institutions under the government of official and at length of hereditary dukes. These, as well as the other German conquests of Clovis, soon became virtually free. They continued to acknowledge Frankish supremacy, but the acknowledgment was only formal. At the head of each confederation was its own Herzog or Duke. These rulers were at first appointed by the Frankish kings, or received their sanction, but in course of time the office became hereditary in particular families. Of the Alamanni the two principal dukedoms were Swabia and Bavaria and it is under these two names that their future history is found. But as Swabia is the original, and as it has exerted a greater influence in the affairs of Germany than has any other confederation, it is the one about which most must be said. For the history of it is, in a measure, the history of Germany, especially after the Treaty of Verdun, A.D. 843. Thassilo, Duke of Bavaria, had been on ill terms with Pepin, the father of Charlemagne. When Charlemagne came to the throne, Thassilo rendered very indifferent service. His repeated acts of treachery caused Charlemagne to remove him, and Bavaria was placed under the authority of the Margrave of Ostreich. The Margraves were lords of the marches. The marches were formed of the border countries by Charlemagne, over which he appointed Margraves, whose duty was to administer justice in his name, to collect tribute and extend his conquests. Bavaria was ruled by Margraves till about 900, when it again became a dukedom. The Margraviate of Ostreich continued till 1156, when it too was made a duchy, and thus the march of Ostreich East Domain formed by Charlemagne was the origin of what is now the Empire of Austria. In the Treaty of Verdun, it will be remembered, Louis the German received the whole of Germany east of the Rhine, and as he was the first sovereign who ruled over the Germans, and over no other Western people, he is considered in history as the founder of the Kingdom of Germany. At his death his son Charles the Fat received from him Swabia, Alemannia, and, as before shown by the death of his two brothers, Charles inherited all Germany, was made emperor, and by invitation assumed the sovereignty of France, but was deposed, and Arnulf, his nephew, was chosen king of Germany in his place. Arnulf, like Charles the Fat, went to Rome and was crowned emperor. He returned in 890 and inflicted such a defeat upon the Northmen that they never again returned in such numbers as to be a national peril. Arnulf died in 899 and was succeeded by his son, Louis the Child, six years old, who nominally reigned 
till 911. His reign was one of the darkest periods of German history. For as soon as the Magyars, the modern Hungarians, heard that Arnulf had been succeeded by a child, they swept into Germany in vast numbers, and fearful was the havoc they caused in every part of the kingdom. Where the Northmen had whipped with cords, these barbarians lashed with scorpions, and there was no leader around whom the nation could rally. At this time, and for about three hundred years, Germany consisted of five duchies, Swabia, Bavaria, Franconia, Saxony, and Lorraine. Louis the Child died in 911. Even while he lived, the dukes were virtually kings in their duchies, and when he died, they could have been altogether kings, but that the dangers threatened by the Magyars, the Slavs, and the Northmen obliged them to form a central government for the common defense. Accordingly, the nobles assembled at Forsheim, and upon the advice of Otto, the Duke of Saxony, Conrad, Duke of Franconia, was made king. But his election displeased the Dukes of Bavaria, Swabia, and Lorraine. The Duke of Lorraine rebelled outright. The Dukes of Bavaria and Swabia yielded, but the bishops, jealous of their power, induced Conrad to force a quarrel with these as also with Henry, Duke of Saxony. This fairly created an anarchy all the days of Conrad, but on his deathbed, 918, he recommended that Henry of Saxony be chosen king in his stead. With Henry began the rule of the House of Saxony, which continued one hundred and six years, 918 to 1024, through Henry I, Otto I, Otto II, Otto III, and Henry II. Henry I delivered Germany from the scourge of the Magyars, and so thoroughly restored peace and order throughout the dominion, that when he died in 936, every land inhabited by German population formed part of the kingdom, and none of the duchies were at war with each other nor among themselves. Before his death, the nobles had, in National Assembly, promised Henry that his son Otto should be recognized as his successor, and the promise was kept. Otto I, the Great, reigned from 936 to 973. His half-brother, however, raised a rebellion and was joined by the dukes of Franconia and Bavaria, but by the help of the Duke of Swabia the rising was put down. A second rebellion was led by Otto's brother, helped by the dukes of Franconia and Lorraine. This, too, was quelled to the immense advantage of Otto. Having secured peace in Germany, and made himself master of the kingdom, as none of his immediate predecessors had been, Otto was by far the greatest sovereign in Europe. But not content with this, he decided to take a step that caused Germany ages of trouble. He put himself into the hands of the Pope, and became the protector of the church. The way in which it was brought about was this. Adelaide, the young widow of Lothair, the son of King Hugh of Provence, Burgundy, had refused to marry the son of Berengar, King of Lombardy. For this she was cast into prison and was cruelly treated. She appealed to Otto. Her appeal not only touched his sympathies, but aroused in him a strong ambition, for he saw the way thus opened to imperial authority. At the head of a strong force, Otto crossed the Alps in 951. He displaced Berengar, who, in the extremity of his fortunes, made a formal session of the Italian kingdom, in his own name and in that of his son Adelbert, to the Saxon as his overlord. Upon this, Otto assumed the title of King of Italy. Besides this, he was so fascinated by young Queen Adelaide that in a few weeks he married her. His son Ludolf, thought his rights threatened by this marriage, returned sullenly to Germany, and with the Archbishop of Mainz formed a conspiracy against his father. Otto, hearing of their plot, hastened home, leaving Duke Conrad of Lorraine to attend to the affairs in Italy. 
but Conrad restored the crown to Berengar and returned to Germany and joined the conspiracy of Ludolf and the archbishop. War broke out. The majority of the kingdom were indeed opposed to Otto, being displeased with his ambitious designs in Italy. But Conrad and Ludolf basely invited in the terrible Magyars which so disgusted the Germans that the whole nation, with one consent, rallied to the support of Otto. At the Battle of Lechfeld, 955, Conrad was slain, and the Magyars received such an overwhelming defeat that the deliverance of Germany was complete. From that time the Magyars began to settle and adapt themselves to the conditions of civilized life in the country which they now occupy, and so arose the kingdom of Hungary. Meantime in Italy, Berengar and his son Adelbert had laid such exorbitant taxes and had made themselves so tyrannical that an embassy was sent by the most of the bishops and princes, as well as the Pope, imploring Otto to come again and deliver them. The Pope at this time was John the Twelfth. The legates of the Pope were enjoined to offer the imperial crown to the King of Germany, provided he drove out the tyrants and delivered the mother of all churches from the miseries she groaned under and could no longer bear. At this Otto went a second time into Italy in 962, deposed Berengar, and was crowned emperor by the Pope. The emperor, at the request of the Pope, promised upon oath to defend the Roman Church against all her enemies, to maintain her in the quiet possession of all the privileges she had enjoyed to that time, to restore to the Holy See the lands and possessions that belonged to St. Peter as soon as he recovered them, to assist the Pope to the utmost of his power when assistance was wanted, and lastly, to make no alteration of the government of Rome without his knowledge or approbation. At the same time the emperor confirmed all the grants of Pepin and Charlemagne, but obliged in his turn the Pope and the Romans to swear obedience to him, and promise upon oath to lend no kind of assistance to Berengar or to his son Adelbert, from whose tyranny he was come to deliver them. Thus in the year 962 was formed the Holy Roman Empire, that mightiest weapon of the papacy in the Middle Ages. After Otto, the sovereign crowned in Germany always claimed it as his right to be afterward crowned in Milan with the iron crown of Lombardy, and in Rome with the golden crown of the empire. In 964 Otto returned to Germany, increased the number of the duchies and nobles, and as he was now the protector of the church, and was set for the promotion of her interests, he immensely increased the importance of the prelates. They received great gifts of land, were endowed with jurisdiction in criminal as well as civil cases, and obtained several other valuable sovereign rights. In 966 he went once more to Italy, where he remained till his death, May 7, 973. Nothing of particular note occurred in the reigns of the three following emperors of the House of Saxony, except that the last one, Henry II, made a treaty with Rudolf III, King of Burgundy, by which, at the death of Rudolf, his kingdom was to be united to the empire, and showed himself so dutiful to the papacy that both he and his wife were made saints. At Henry's death in 1024, the great nobles met at Oppenheim, and elected Conrad II, a Count of Franconia, king. With him began the rule of the House of Franconia, which continued one hundred years, through Conrad II, Henry III, Henry IV, and Henry V. Through the reigns of all, there were plottings, counterplottings, and wars, civil as well as foreign, which kept the nation in a constant turmoil. In accordance with the above-mentioned treaty, Conrad in 1032 received into the empire the kingdom of Burgundy, and in 1034 he received in Geneva the homage of its leading nobles. Conrad died in 1039 and was succeeded by his son, Henry III, whom, as early as 1026, 
Conrad had caused to be elected King of Germany, in whom he had made Duke of Bavaria in 1027, and Duke of Swabia and King of Burgundy in 1038. At this time the vices of the clergy all over Europe had become most scandalous, the popes setting the infamous example. Henry entered Rome with an army in 1046, summoned a council, deposed the pope who held the throne, and raised to the papal see Clement II, who in turn crowned him emperor. In the succeeding ten years of his reign it devolved upon Henry to appoint three more popes in the succession, and as all of them were energetic administrators, and exerted themselves to carry out the policy of Henry, thus he did much to stay the tide of papal wickedness. In 1056 Henry III died, and was succeeded by his son Henry, six years old, but who had already, at the age of four years, been crowned King Henry IV of Germany. He was under guardianship till he was fifteen years old, 1065, when he assumed the duties of government, and from that time till his death, forty-one years, between the fierce arrogance of the papacy and the ambitious jealousies of his own subject nobles, he never knew peace. During his reign was the First Crusade, 1095, and he made wealth of Altdorf in Swabia, Duke of Bavaria. Henry IV died in 1106 and was succeeded by his son Henry V. War with the papacy was renewed, in which Henry's chief friends were two Swabian princes of the Hohenstaufen family, Frederick and Conrad. Frederick had been made Duke of Swabia by Henry IV, and now, by Henry V, Conrad was made Duke of Franconia, which had been directly attached to the crown since the time of Otto I. Henry V was succeeded in 1125 by Lothair, Duke of Saxony, and when he received the imperial crown, Innocent II claimed that he did so as the vassal of the Pope. Lothair was succeeded in 1137 by the above Conrad, the Swabian Duke of Franconia, who became Conrad III. With Conrad III began the reign of the House of Swabia, or Hohenstaufen, which continued 117 years, and was the most glorious age of the medieval history of Germany. In 1146 went forth the Second Crusade, headed by the Emperor Conrad and Louis VII of France. Conrad died in 1152, when Germany passed under the rule of one of the greatest sovereigns she ever had, Frederick Barbarossa, Duke of Swabia, who reigned thirty-eight years. Here we must notice the rise of another Swabian family which has had a notable course in history, and which is inseparably connected with the reign of Frederick Barbarossa. Henry IV made wealth or Guelph of Swabia, Duke of Bavaria. He was succeeded in the Duchy of Bavaria by his son Henry the Proud, who was invested with the Duchy of Saxony. Henry the Proud rebelled against Conrad III, whereupon both his duchies were declared forfeited. Saxony was granted to Albert the Bear, a Saxon noble, and Bavaria fell to Leopold, Margrave of Austria. Henry the Proud suddenly died, and his brother, Duke Welf, continued the contest for his duchies. Welf, hoping to succeed Leopold in the Margraviate, consented to a compromise by which Saxony, with the assent of Albert the Bear, was granted to Henry the Lion, the son of Henry the Proud. Instead, however, of the Margraviate of Austria being given to Welf, it passed in the end to Henry Jasomergat. Welf for years contended with his rival, but without avail, for Henry the Lion finally, at the head of an army, laid claim to Bavaria as his, by right of inheritance from his father, Henry the Proud. Frederick Barbarossa, through his mother, was allied to the Welfs, and he, having a personal regard for Henry the Lion, began his reign by promising to secure for Henry the Duchy of Bavaria. The Margrave Jasomergat, 
however, persistently refused to give it up, till at last, in 1156, Frederick detached the march of Austria from Bavaria, made it a duchy with special privileges, and bestowed it on the stubborn Margrave. This honor contented Jesomregat, and left Frederick free to fulfill his promise to Henry the Lion. And so Henry received his paternal duchy of Bavaria, in addition to the duchy of Saxony which he already held. And from this Swabian, Aluminian, house of Welf or Gelf, is descended in direct line through Henry the Proud and Henry the Lion, the house of Hanover, which has ruled England from George I, August the first, seventeen fourteen, to the present Edward the seventh, Rex di Gratia. Frederick Barbarossa received the German crown at Aix la Chapelle, March nine, eleven fifty two. In October eleven fifty four, he descended to Italy and assumed the iron crown of Lombardy. Then, after apprehending Arnold of Brescia, as an earnest of his purpose to support the papal cause, he was crowned emperor by Pope Adrian the Fourth, June eighteen, eleven fifty five. From this time onward till eleven eighty six, the reign of Frederick was little else than a long contest with the Lombard cities and with the popes. By his marriage with Beatrice, daughter of the Count of Upper Burgundy, he added that province to the kingdom of Burgundy and to the empire. He thus reasserted the imperial authority in Burgundy and received the homage of the Burgundian nobles. Having at last brought these struggles to an honorable close, he started in 1187 for Palestine at the head of the Third Crusade, but was drowned while crossing a small river in Pisidia, June 10, 1190. Frederick was succeeded by his son, Henry VI, who was crowned emperor by Celestine III, March 31, 1191. Richard I of England, Cor de Lyon, as he was on his way home from the Third Crusade, had been arrested by the Duke of Austria December 21, 1192, and in the following March was surrendered to the Emperor Henry, who imprisoned him. With the money that was paid for Richard's ransom, the emperor was enabled to fit out a fine army, with which he succeeded in conquering the Saracen kingdom of Sicily. So great was the authority which he acquired that it is supposed to be almost certain that had he lived a little longer, he would have achieved his great ambition of having the crown declared hereditary in his family. But this aspiration was quenched by his death in 1197. In his reign, about 1195, began the Fourth Crusade. Upon Henry's death there was a double election. Philip, Henry's son, was favored by a large majority of the princes, while his opponents urged the claims of Otto, son of Henry the Lion. There was no hope for Otto, however, had not Innocent III cast into the scale in his favor all the influence of the papacy, which at this time was absolute. Even with the help of the Pope, Otto's success was exceedingly doubtful until Philip was murdered in 1208. This, of course, put a stop to the war, and Otto IV was crowned emperor. As soon as Otto had been made emperor, he violated all the pledges he had made to the Pope for the pontiff's favor, and began to act as an independent sovereign. This was what no sovereign could be suffered to do while Innocent III was Pope, he accordingly played off against Otto, Frederick, the son of Henry the Sixth. Otto, thinking to injure Frederick's chances by striking at the Pope, went to the support of John of England against Philip Augustus of France. But at the Battle of Bouvines, July 27, 1214, he met a crushing defeat and fled a ruined emperor. He retired to his hereditary possession the Principality of Brunswick, and apart from that, has no more place in history. In the place of Otto IV, Frederick II ascended to the marble throne of Charlemagne at Aix-la-Chapelle, and received the silver crown of Germany July 1215. In November 22, 1220, 
received at Rome from the hands of Pope Honorius IV, the golden crown of the empire. In the estimation of his contemporaries, Frederick II was the wonder of the world. Though perhaps not the strongest in all respects, he was the most brilliant of the German kings. In the beginning of his public career in 1208, at the age of fifteen, he possessed but the crown of Sicily, and at his death, December 13, 1250, the splendor of his position was such that it has never been surpassed in human history. For then he possessed, in addition to his original inherited crown of Sicily, the crown of Sardinia, the crown of Burgundy, the iron crown of Lombardy, the silver crown of Germany, the golden crown of the empire, and last, but in that age the most glorious of all, the crown of Jerusalem, with which he, with his own hands, had crowned himself May 18, 1229, at the time of his recovery of the holy city from the Saracens and its restoration to the church. In A.D. 1245, July 17, Frederick was excommunicated by Pope Innocent IV. When he heard of it, he laughed and said, Has the Pope deposed me? Bring me my crowns, that I may see of what I am deprived. Then seven crowns were brought him, the royal crown of Germany, the imperial diadem of Rome, the iron circlet of Lombardy, the crowns of Sicily, Burgundy, Sardinia, and Jerusalem. He put them on his head, one after another, and said, I have them still, and none shall rob me of them without hard battle. But though Frederick feared not the excommunication of the Pope, the effect of such a thing was always to turn loose the elements of violence among men, and especially in Germany. Of that time an old historian says, After the Emperor Frederick was put under the ban, the robbers rejoiced over their spoils. Then were the plowshares beaten into swords, and the reaping hooks into lances. No one went anywhere without steel and stone to set in blaze whatever he could fire. During the reign of Frederick II, the conquest of Prussia was begun A.D. 1230, under the leadership of the Knights of the Teutonic Order, who, after half a century of hard fighting, found themselves masters of the entire country. Also, in the beginning of his reign, the Fifth Crusade was proclaimed by Innocent III, 1198, and it went forth in 1201. Frederick II died February 13, 1250, and was succeeded by his son, Conrad IV, who reigned only four years, and such was the condition of the empire, through the contending factions of Germany and the intrigues of the Pope, that he was never actually crowned emperor. He died in 1254, and with him ended the line of Hohenstaufen emperors, whose rule formed the age most interesting in the medieval history of Germany. Women never held a higher place, nor, on the whole, did they ever respond more nobly to the honors freely lavished upon them. The problems of government were seen in new lights, partly from the study of Roman law which passed from Italy to Germany, partly from the summaries of native custom in the Sachsenspiegel, that is, Saxon law, and Schwabenspiegel, Swabian Alemannian law. Altogether, Germany has seen no more fascinating epoch, none more full of life, movement, and color. This age of glory was followed by one of misery, called the Great Interregum, which lasted twenty years. This was the saddest time that ever was in Germany. Everyone did what he liked. The fist and the sword decided between right and wrong. The princes in the cities were in constant feud. The knights made themselves strong castles and lived in them on plunder and murder. From their fortresses they swooped down on the merchants traveling from town to town and robbed them or levied on them heavy tolls. They went plundering over the level land, they robbed the farmers of their cattle, devastated their fields, and burned their houses. Moreover, the neighboring nobles and knights quarreled with each other and fought so that the country was one battlefield. This period of anarchy was turned to account by the papacy through Pope Urban IV. 
Up to this time the election of the emperor had always been virtually by the leading princes, although each election needed the sanction of the whole class of immediate nobles. Now, however, mainly by the influence of the Pope, the electorate was definitely settled upon only the Archbishop of Mainz, the Archbishop of Cologne, the Archbishop of Treves, the Margrave of Brandenburg, the King of Bohemia, and the Princes of the House of Wittelsbach, Bavaria, and of the House of Saxony. At the beginning of the Great Interrogum, William of Holland received a nominal allegiance for two years when he died. Then, about 1257, there was a double election of Alfonso of Castile in Spain and Richard, Earl of Cornwall, brother of Henry III of England. Richard was crowned, but he visited Germany only three times in the seventeen years, while Alfonso never visited it at all, although claiming all the time to be its sovereign. The influence of none of these tended in the least degree to check the disorder of the times. When Richard died, the princes showed no disposition to choose an emperor, for a condition of affairs that allowed every one to do as he pleased was exactly to their liking. But the northern revenues of the Pope were seriously falling off, and this with troubles at home caused a papal longing for an emperor again who would be the protector of the church. The Pope, therefore, informed the electors that if they did not choose an emperor, he himself would appoint one. Accordingly, the electors met in 1273 and raised to the throne Rudolf, Count of Habsburg of Swabia. During the interregnum, Ottokar, King of Bohemia, had acquired by marriage and conquest a great territory beyond his native possessions and his acquisitions included the Duchy of Austria and its dependencies, Styria, Carinthia, and Carniola. This made Ottokar the most powerful prince in Germany, and he expected to receive the German crown at the election. Therefore, when the crown was bestowed upon Rudolf, Ottokar refused to acknowledge him as sovereign. War followed, and in the Battle of Marchfield near Vienna, A.D. 1278, Ottokar was defeated and slain. Austria, Styria, and Carniola were then granted in fief to Rudolf's son Albert. Thus Rudolf made himself memorable as the founder of the House of Habsburg, which has ruled Austria from that time to this, which from this time has formed one of the most influential forces in the national life of Germany, and which gave sovereigns to Spain in the days of her greatest glory. Rudolf of Swabia died in 1291 and was succeeded by Adolf of Nassau, who ruled till 1298, when he was succeeded by Duke Albert of Austria, Rudolf's son. Albert reigned till 1308 and was succeeded by Count Henry of Luxembourg, who reigned as Henry VII till 1313. Upon the death of Henry the Seventh, the electors could not agree, and the result was a double election. Frederick the Fair, Duke of Austria, son of Albert, and Louis, Duke of Bavaria. War broke out and continued for nine years when, at the Battle of Mulberg, A.D. 1322, Frederick's army was entirely routed, and in 1325 the two rivals agreed to rule in common. Frederick died in 1330, and Louis IV reigned till 1347. At the death of Louis, Gunther, Count of Schwarzburg, was elected, but Charles, King of Bohemia, by liberal bribes, bought off his supporters, and Gunther resigned his claim, and Charles IV reigned. The working of the imperial electorate had proved to be unsatisfactory, and it was reformed by Charles IV in 1356 by what is known as the Golden Bull, by this new arrangement, the electorate was allowed to include, as formerly, the three archbishops, the King of Bohemia and the Margrave of Brandenburg, but only the Duke of Saxony and the Palsgrave or Count Palatine of the Rhine of the House of Wittelsbach. Thus by Charles in the Golden Bull, the electorate was confined to seven personages, three archbishops, three lay princes, and one king and ever afterward the emperor was chosen by these officials, 
who are the ones so often referred to in the history of the Reformation by the term electors. Luther's protector, Frederick, was the elector of Saxony in his day. Charles IV added to the original possessions of his house of Luxembourg, Silesia, Lower Lusatia, and the Margraviate of Brandenburg, and in his last days he wore the crowns of Bohemia, of Germany, of Burgundy, of Lombardy, and of the Empire. He died at Prague in 1378 and was succeeded by his son, Wenceslas. Wenceslas was deposed, and the crown was given to Rupert, elector of the Palatinate, A.D. 1400, who reigned till 1410 when he died, and Sigismund, brother of Wenceslaus, and king of Hungary, reigned. This was the emperor Sigismund who gave up John Hus and Jerome of Prague to be burned by the Council of Constance, which brought on the Hussite Wars. Sigismund was a spendthrift and never had enough money for his wants, and for four hundred thousand gulden he granted to Frederick, Count of Hohenzollern of Swabia, first as a pledge but afterward as a permanent fief, the March of Brandenburg. With the death of Sigismund ended the Luxembourg dynasty, and the House of Habsburg was restored. Sigismund was succeeded by Albert II, Duke of Austria, in 1438. Albert II was succeeded in 1440 by Frederick IV, and he, in 1493, by Maximilian I, and he, in 1519, by Charles V, before whom Luther stood for the faith of Christ, before whom the German princes read the famous protest. Although the German crown remained elective from the time of Albert II forward, it was always conferred on a member of the House of Habsburg until the extinction of the male line, and then it was taken up by the female in Maria Theresa, whose husband was elected emperor in 1745. He was emperor only in name, however. Maria Theresa's was the rule, in fact. Maria Theresa's husband was succeeded in 1765 by her son, Joseph II. And in her line of the House of Habsburg, the imperial office remained till both the Holy Roman Empire and the German Kingdom came to an end in 1806. And in her line, the imperial office of the Empire of Austria-Hungary remains to the present day. Reference was made above to the March of Brandenburg, and its sale by the Emperor Sigismund to Frederick of Hohenzollern of Swabia. Frederick thus became one of the electors of the empire. It will be remembered, too, that it was the knights of the Teutonic Order who made the conquest of Prussia. At the time of the Reformation, Albert of Brandenburg happened to be Grand Master of the Teutonic Order. He became a Protestant, dissolved the order, and received in fief, 1525, from the King of Poland, the Duchy of Prussia. Albert left two granddaughters. Joachim Frederick, Elector of Brandenburg, married Eleanor the Younger. His son John Sigismund married Anna the Elder and thus the Duchy of Prussia was secured to the family of the Elector of Brandenburg. Frederick William, called the Great Elector, was the grandson of John Sigismund and Anna. By the Treaty of Wellau in 1657, the Duchy of Prussia was declared independent of Poland. The Great Elector added largely to his territories, and in 1701 his son Frederick, who had succeeded him in 1688, having obtained the consent of the emperor, crowned himself king of Prussia. And thus under the Alemannian house of Hohenzollern arose the kingdom of Prussia, which, through Frederick I, 1701-1713, to 1713, Frederick William I, 1713-1740, to 1740, Frederick II, the Great, 1740-1786, to 1786, Frederick William II, 1786 to 1797, Frederick William III, 1797 to 1840, Frederick William IV, 1840 to 1861, has come down in direct descent to William I, 
King of Prussia, 1861 to 1871, and German Emperor from January 18, 1871 till March 9, 1888. Frederick till June 15, 1888, and William II, German Emperor of the present day.